Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India morning everybody from uh, today onwards we are going to start the systemic pathology lecture series today is the first lecture we will going to talk about lung pathology and before we actually start lung pathology all of you should be aware of a normal basic anatomy histology and physiology of the lung uh, respiratory system in today's class of respiratory system we only talk about the normal anatomy histology and a basic physiology of respiratory system let's see if you see the objectives in today's class we'll talk about one is anatomy we'll see and learn what exactly is conduction system which includes mainly the tracheobronchial tree then we'll see what exactly the meaning of respiratory unit respiratory unit is what is the definition of respiratory unit we'll see the normal histology of all the structures of respiratory system we'll see the basic blood supply basic blood supply of the respiratory system and finally we are going to learn about the diffusion barrier where exactly the diffusion of gases takes place that is called as diffusion barrier what exactly it is right if you see that picture lungs respiratory system consists of two lungs right one right lung and left lung both these lungs are connected by a tracheobronchial tree right tracheobronchial tree so this part we call it as conducting system a tracheobronchial tree we call it as conduction system the main function of tracheobronchial tree is to conduct the gases and make the gases to reach till the periphery of the lung parenchyma where exactly the gaseous diffusion takes place so we have tracheobronchial tree that is called conducting system then actually diffusion takes place in lung proper lung parenchyma that is called diffusion barrier diffusion barrier where exactly it takes place it takes place in at the level of alveoli and respiratory bronchioles right we have two lungs right lung and left lung both the lungs are situated in the thoracic cavity these lungs on their surface they are covered by pleura and finally they are limited or externally they are covered by a strong rib cage these two lungs they are separated from the abdominal cavity by a fibromuscular sheet this we call it as diaphragm why it is important both the thoracic cage and also the diaphragm they are also responsible for the normal physiology of the lung the inspiration expression when it is required so all of you should remember how to identify the lung is of right side or left side right lung always have a three lobes okay one two three lobes which are separated by interlobar septae so these lines are called as interlobar septae which there are two interlobar septae which separates the right lung into three lobes what are those three lobes one superior lobe middle lobe and lower lobe we call it inferior lobe three when compared to right lung left lung will have only two lobes and a small part of lung we call it as lingula we have one is superior lobe and inferior lobe 
this is how we should identify the side of the lung. The area where the tracheobronchial tree or blood vessels which enters the lung, that part we call it as hilus or hilum. Right. This is a normal anatomy, the gross anatomy of the lung. Now, we will see the conducting system, right? Conducting system. So, it is conducting system has been shown in the slides. If you see the conducting system or respiratory tract actually divided into two parts. One is upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract. Upper respiratory tract as you can see is mainly consists of nasal cavity, pharynx and larynx. Below the level of larynx that means trachea, tracheobronchial tree and lung parenchyma that is alveoli. All these structures we call it as lower respiratory tract. Because we are concentrating on lungs, we will talk about lower respiratory tract. Now, we will not talk about the upper respiratory tract. Let us see, how does the tracheobronchial tree looks like? Tracheobronchial tree. All of you can see the picture. Tracheobronchial tree consists of a single large tube windpipe, we call it as trachea. At the thoracic space, this divides into two main principal bronchi. Primary, these are called as primary or principal bronchi. This is left side and right side. And these uh, primary or principal bronchus divides into secondary bronchus, primary bronchus and secondary bronchus. Because right lung has three lobes, there are three secondary branches which enters the right lobe. Here left there are mainly two secondary branches. These branches, secondary branches, once they enter the individual lobes, they again branch dichotomously like a branching of the tree dichotomously into tertiary bronchioles. These tertiary bronchioles again they divide the bifurcate. Okay. These are all tertiary bronchioles within the lung lobe, individual lobe. Finally, tertiary bronchioles, so if you say this is tertiary bronchioles, they lead to respiratory bronchioles and alveoli. The final part of the branching of tracheobronchial tree contains respiratory bronchiole after that we have alveolar sac right i repeat tracheobronchial tree consists of trachea windpipe and right and left main bronchus we call it as principal bronchus or primary bronchus one thing what you should all of you should remember is at this stage at the level of primary bronchus the right main bronchus is little wider it is wider and it is more in line with the trachea. Why it is important? Whatever in case of uh, aspiration pneumonia, if you inject liquid or fluid, the first thing where it goes in an ambulatory position is it enters the right lung, middle and lower lobes. Hence, in any case aspiration pneumonia, the most common part of lung that is affected is right lung, middle and lower lobes. Why? Mainly because of the position of the primary bronchi. So, when compared to right bronchus, left bronchus is placed at an acute angle, acute angle and it is small, actually it is acute angle and it is small, right. This is tracheobronchial tree. Let us see this picture. Why it is called tracheobronchial tree? You can compare the branching of trachea and bronchi with the tree which is shown in the picture. Similarly, it looks like a branching of the tree, hence we call this as tracheobronchial tree. One thing all of you should know is from the trachea till the terminal bronchial, when it branches the diameter of the bronchi, the luminal diameter of the bronchi will gradually decreases. It will become small, 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 finally it leads to respiratory bronchiole and lung alveoli that has been shown there. We will go in detail in next few slides. Let us see the terminal portion of the branching, what we call it as 
this is a terminal bronchia, terminal bronchi or terminal bronchioles which leads to a respiratory bronchiole and this respiratory bronchioles again it branches and leads to a group of a sac like air filled sac like structures we call it as alveoli. These are alveoli. These alveoli when you see microscopically that can be compared with the bunch of grapes. The grapes picture is also as shown there. It typically looks like that. You can see the stem those are terminal bronchioles leading to respiratory bronchioles finally leading to grape like structures what we call it as alveoli. Why it is important? Till the terminal bronchiole the branches from trachea till the terminal bronchiole the main function is only the conduction of air. Conduction of air that means it has other functions, but we will uh, if we concentrate or if we want to uh, discuss about diffusion, diffusion will not take place at this level. Actual diffusion of gases takes place after the terminal bronchioles that is respiratory bronchioles and alveolar unit. Hence, this part we call it as respiratory unit. The respiratory unit. So, one terminal bronchiole leading into respiratory bronchiole certain branches along with bunch of capillaries. This is one respiratory unit like this we have numerous respiratory units throughout the lung parenchyma. Okay. All of you understand this is respiratory unit. See the picture. Let us see one important point all of you should remember is from the trachea till the terminal bronchiole the approximate number in a healthy individual approximate number of branches that occurs in tracheobronchial tree is 16. There will be 16 number of branches from trachea till the terminal bronchiole. This is called the main function is for only conduction of air, conduction of air. From terminal bronchiole till the alveoli you have 4, 5, 6 branches. So, all these branches it is called as are helpful for diffusion of gases. This is called a respiratory unit and diffusion of gases takes place at this level. right? This is only for conduction and below respiratory unit is for diffusion of gases. Let us see. We have seen this tracheobronchial tree have it branches, we have seen the respiratory unit. Let us see the normal histology of respiratory tract, what all cells it lines. All of us know from trachea till the level of terminal bronchiole, it is the all the tracheobronchial tree they are lined by pseudo stratified, pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. This is called as respiratory epithelium. right? How it looks? You can see the histology picture there. Actually speaking, when you see histology, actually speaking, it is single layer of epithelium and the nuclei they are placed at different levels. Hence, on microscopy, it looks like there are more than one layer, hence, we call it as pseudo stratified. It is a pseudo false, it is looks like stratified, but actually, it is not stratified. This is single layer of columnar epithelium. All those cells will have a end plate here, ciliary end plate. From this end plate, you have finute hair like structures projecting on the surface of these columnar cells. This is ciliated cells. So, major cell lining in tracheobronchial tree is ciliated pseudo stratified columnar cell. Amidst this or interspersed this, you have an occasional cells. How it looks? These are called goblet cells, cup shaped cells which contains mucin and we have basally located nucleus. So, these cells we call it as mucus secreting cells, mucus secreting cells. These are ciliated respiratory cells, mucus secreting cells. Along with that occasionally you have some other cells which have secretory in nature, but the secretion is uh, more of a serous watery in consistency. These are serous cells serous cells, they are also columnar cells, ciliated cells, goblet cells, serous cells. And when you observe carefully at the base, this is the basement membrane of the respiratory epithelium. Occasionally, we have some round color cells situated at the 
basal region we call it as basal cells basal cells these are actually nothing but stem cells helpful for regeneration of this epithelium along with that we have one more type of cells dispersed here and they are of neuroendocrine nature we call it as diffuse neuroendocrine cells the other name for diffuse neuroendocrine cells are kalchitsky cells you can see there so these are the main different types of cells which lines the tracheobronchial tree right if somebody ask all of you should know that these are the four different uh, five different types of cells that lines the respiratory system so what is the function of these cells ciliated cells is mainly useful for clearing the microorganisms and helps in defense goblet cells mainly secretes the mucus which forms a thin layer on the respiratory epithelium thin layer on the respiratory epithelium serous cells it secretes watery kind of a secretion this is thick mucus watery it also forms a layer along with the mucus basal cells are used for proliferation we also call it as stem cells and finally neuroendocrine diffuse neuroendocrine cells they are also known as kalchitsky cells all neuroendocrine tumors of the respiratory tract that we are going to talk about in when i take up the tumors of the lung for example the carcinoid tumor atypical carcinoid small cell carcinoma large cell neuroendocrine carcinoma all these tumors arises from the neuroendocrine cells that is called as kalchitsky cell right this is about the tracheobronchial tree let's see what exactly happens at the respiratory unit so as i told you earlier respiratory unit consists of respiratory bronchiole and alveoli unit at the end of terminal bronchiole and respiratory bronchiole the main respiratory bronchiole terminal bronchioles they are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium with the nucleus in the center you will not have any ciliated epithelium here they are just lined by simple cuboidal epithelium i'll write here this is simple cuboidal epithelium and afterwards on the final branches of the respiratory tract is actually lined by all these alveoli if you see this is alveoli this is one alveoli this is one alveoli right all these alveoli they are actually lined by a flattened epithelial cells and occasionally we have one popped up cells this flattened epithelial cells we call it as the alveolar unit alveoli from simple cuboidal epithelium they transform to flattened epithelium which actually lines the alveolar wall this is one alveoli this is one alveolar lumen and this is one alveolar lumen these individual alveoli they are separated by a thin septae we call it as inter alveolar septae why it is called inter alveolar septae this septae is common for both the alveoli it separates these two alveoli so these alveolar lining septae are lined by an inner side they are lined by simple squamous epithelium flattened epithelium and occasionally one big cells simple columnar epithelium and big cells simple columnar and big cells simple columnar and occasionally one big cells the simple columnar epithelium which lines the alveoli where actually the diffusion takes place this we call it as type 1 cells type 1 pneumocytes in between occasionally you will see the big cells which is popped out into the lumen of the alveoli these are called as type 2 cells okay the so majority of the alveoli that means about more than 95% of the alveoli they are lined by type 1 cells and type 2 cells they only constitute about 5% right what is the function of type 1 cells the main function is for diffusion of gases main function is diffusion of gases takes place at type 1 cells and one more important thing what you should know these type 1 cells they are thin flat they are easily fragile they are very fragile we can say they are very fragile any kind of an infection any kind of an irritation whatever kind of an injury the first cell to be damaged in respiratory tract at the level of alveoli are type 1 epithelial cells 
then what is the function of type 2 cells? Type 2 cells the main function is to secrete surfactant 1 for surfactant secretion and number 2 what you should remember these cells they are pretty resistant when compared to type 1 cells they are resistant they will not die so easily and third main function they have a capacity of proliferation and differentiation this is very important they also act like stem cells the main function of the stem cells is proliferation and differentiation i will tell you one thing whenever you inhale toxic injury or whenever any kind of a damage to the lung the first cell which dies is the type 1 cells afterwards type 2 cells will get stimulated they start proliferating that means one cell become two two become four when they proliferate they cover the damaged surface so, if you see lung microscopy at this level, you will see many number of type 2 epithelial cells. That means, they are replacing the damaged type 1. This is called proliferation. After the inciting injury is taken away during healing process, these cells, they again differentiate to form a type 1 cells. So, this is called differentiation. All of you should remember what is proliferation and what is differentiation. So, these are the important function of type 1 and type 2 epithelial cells, respiratory epithelial cells. We will talk about the blood supply, blood supply to the respiratory system. The basic important features I am going to highlight to this. So, all of you know that cardiopulmonary circulation, this is very important. There are two lungs, right lung and left lung and there is heart here, right and left. The right heart all of you know that carries deoxygenated blood. The main outlet from the right ventricle is the pulmonary trunk. This pulmonary trunk divides into two major branches right and left, right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery. That means, any vessel which is coming out of the heart we call it as artery. This pulmonary artery is the only artery which contains deoxygenated blood when compared to other arteries in the body. So, once the it enters the pulmonary artery enters the respective lungs, it again branches, it forms the plexus at the level of alveoli, where exactly the gaseous expansion takes place. Once it acquires, receives the oxygen, it forms a blood vessels called as pulmonary veins. So, this pulmonary veins they enter the left side of the heart, two pulmonary veins from the right lung, two pulmonary veins from the left lung, it's, you can see in the picture. So, there are four pulmonary veins, they comes and drains the oxygenated blood in the left atria. Okay. This forms the closed circuit, I repeat, the main pulmonary artery from the right side, it branches into right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery which enters each respective lungs at the level of hilus, it forms a capillary plexus around alveoli, where exactly the gaseous exchange takes place. Once acquiring receiving oxygen, it forms a plexus will combine to form two pulmonary veins from right side, two pulmonary veins on left side at they open into the left atria. Here the pulmonary veins contains oxygenated blood that will be circulated throughout the body. This is the main pulmonary circulations. Let us see, we talk about and before I go in detail about the circulation at the parenchymal level, I will talk about few lines about bronchopulmonary segment. This is very important, bronchopulmonary segment. What are these bronchopulmonary segments? In each lung and each lobe, a terminal bronchiole terminal bronchiole along with a fragment uh, along with a branch of the pulmonary artery, branch of the pulmonary artery, this is the terminal bronchiole, branch of the terminal artery will supply a certain group of respiratory units. So, this is one respiratory unit and each terminal bronchi, bronchi after supplying here, they are limited by a septa. It actually looks like a conical in shape, the base is towards the pleura, this is the pleura and there is limitation here. There is one more terminal bronchi here with a branch of respiratory artery 
and this is one respiratory unit there is one septa here. So, this whole thing we call it as a bronchopulmonary segment why it is important whenever there is infection in this segment this septa will prevent the spread of infection to the other segments this is very important. Okay. So, what is the structure in each bronchopulmonary segment as I told you it contains a terminal bronchiole a group of alveoli respiratory bronchioles and alveoli in the center along with the terminal bronchiole there is one artery I will put red in color this artery is a branch from pulmonary artery pulmonary artery this artery it forms a plexus around these capillaries right again this branches it forms a plexus along this capillaries this pulmonary branch contains deoxygenated blood once oxygenation takes place here these plexus will again combine together to form a one more vascular channel we call it as pulmonary veins these pulmonary veins will travel or traverse along the septae in the center along with the terminal bronchial we have branch from pulmonary artery but pulmonary vein tributaries or branches we it will be present in in the septa each septa of the bronchopulmonary segment so all of you should remember we will go in detail about this part the gaseous exchange plot in the next slide. Roughly the right lung will have around 10 bronchopulmonary segments that is being shown there and left lobe approximately they have about 8 to 9 bronchopulmonary segments ok. You can see all of you can read in anatomy right. Let us see what exactly happens here at the alveolar unit what is the pattern of blood supply at this. I told you bronchopulmonary segments and the same picture is schematic diagram is shown there. So, you can see the terminal bronchiole how it is branching from the respiratory bronchiolar units and each is associated with the blue color pulmonary artery which contains deoxygenated blood and see the how the plexus are formed around each alveoli ok. Once the plexus are formed they are again drained separately in a red color vessel that is called as pulmonary vein, but it contains oxygenated blood. Along with the branch of pulmonary artery, we have one more blood vessel, small branch of pulmonary blood vessel. This is from bronchial circulation, branch from bronchial artery. This is a branch from bronchial artery. See how the plexus are formed around that the periphery of this alveoli it just looks like how you see in the market each apple or some fruits they how they are covered with this net like structure on the surface it typically looks like that right. Let us see what is the function of these circulations all of you should remember the main function of pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein which is there in the lung parenchyma is only for gaseous exchange it gives takes the oxygen and it gives the carbon dioxide all this exchange will carried by this pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein secretion pulmonary vein uh, tributaries. The main then the nutrition for these the tracheobronchial tree lung parenchyma is given by direct branches from the thoracic aorta through bronchial artery. The main function of the bronchial artery is to give nutrition for the tracheobronchial tree and lung parenchyma, but oxygenation is or carbon dioxide diffusion takes place mainly by pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins all of you remember let us see. Then finally, we should know what exactly the diffusion barrier how it looks we call it as diffusion barrier. These are just membranes where actually the diffusion of gases take place where they are they are nothing but this part alveoli with the capillary plexus. Let us see if you magnify this how it looks ok I will magnify this part right. There is one alveola here one alveola here one alveoli these are the alveoli one alveoli 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 these are alveolar lumens and this is inter alveolar septa. This lumen is usually free you will not see any kind of cells or else occasionally you may see some kind of macrophages alveolar macrophages in it. Septa what exactly septa contains all of you see carefully observe carefully 
this alveoli on its inner surface they contains type 1 alveolocytes, occasional type 2 alveolocytes, right. There is one more alveoli here, it also contains type 1, occasional type 2. There is one alveoli here, type 1, occasional type 2, okay. There is extremely scant space between these two alveoli, this is alveolar interstitium, we call it as interstitium. If you concentrate on this interstitium, we have a thin walled capillaries, these are the capillaries, very thin walled, very tiny capillaries. The main feature of these capillaries is, it they have got only a thin endothelial lining, they have a devoid of basement membrane or basement membrane is very much fenestrated. And this capillaries, they are in close approximation with this type 1 alveolar pneumocytes. So, how it looks? There is capillary basement membrane, scant interstitium, there is alveolar epithelial cells, capillary basement membrane. This interstitium is very scant, it contains what? Occasional mesenchymal cells, spindle shaped, spindle shaped mesenchymal cells that is fibroblast or an occasional lymphocytes or else it is very, they are in very close approximation. Why it is important? So, when you inhale air, the gas because of decrease or variation in the saturation of oxygen and carbon dioxide, all oxygen will enters the alveolar lumen, we have blood vessels here and the carbon dioxide will be diffuses back to the alveolar lumen. Finally, it will expire out. So, actual diffusion of gas place takes place at this level and this we call it as diffusion barrier, right. All of you should remember exactly the diffusion barrier. One thing we should remember, uh, this alveolar epithelium and capillary, they almost they are reaching each other, they are very approximate each other. So, that is what it is helpful for diffusion of gases, okay. So, this in uh, today's lecture, we spoke about the normal anatomy. We spoke about what all we uh, learnt in today's class. We spoke about the lungs, we spoke about the tracheobronchial tree, its lining, how it branches. We spoke about the blood circulation of the lung, what is uh, pulmonary circulation, what is bronchial circulation. We spoke about the respiratory unit, what exactly the component of respiratory unit and we spoke about bronchopulmonary segment and finally, alveoli the diffusion barrier, okay. These terminologies all of you should be aware and thorough with to understand the actual pathology in future classes, okay. This is the uh, features we highlighted in today's lecture. All of you go back and read about normal anatomy, rebrush your anatomy no knowledge and from next class onwards we will actually speak about the pathology series of lung lectures. Thank you.